Well, welcome back everybody. Another video on this channel. Man, we've been showing some extreme love to this one. I'm happy to be back after two weeks of sickness. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling good enough to look at these robots right here. Because we have the Rise of the Beast Scorponok with Sandspear. We have Beast Alliance, whatever you want to call these, Cheetor. You can see these two boys are rocking them. We have a sealed in the box Air Raptor. And there's kind of a funny story with his packaging, which we will get to. And you can see that we have a Studio Series 86 RC with her Thrilling 30. So that's going to be interesting to compare those two girls because, as we'll find out, this one's got a little bit of a biker motif going on. And uh, it'll be interesting to see that. But the Rise of the Beast Air Razor, you can see our girls just kind of chilling up there. And I want to address this first and foremost, because what I'm about to say, this is not tossing shade at any other YouTubers, because I don't believe in doing that. But I have heard that this girl referred to as the Kingdom Air Razor, basically with leg extenders. And I heard that, and I'm like, bro, did you even bother to fact check this? Because... While she does utilize shared engineering, a lot of her proportions and parts are bigger on this version as opposed to the Kingdom one. This is this whole situation is like the Thrilling 30 whenever they did the version of Laser Prime. There was a third party company that was engineering their own Laser Prime, not a knockoff, like they engineered it to be just their rendition instead of a KO. And it transformed in the same way that the Thrilling 30 G2 Laser Prime did. But again, it didn't share any of the parts because there was only so many ways to go from that truck to that robot mode. Well, it's the same thing with Air Razor. Does she transform 98% of the same as Kino Air Razor? Yeah, because again, there's only so many ways to go from that bird mode to this sort of robot mode. So I wanted to go ahead and get that out of the way. Anyway, like I said, I'm not tossing shade at anybody because I can see how they drew that conclusion of this being just the Kingdom Air Razor with leg extenders, but it's like, bro, fact check it before you spout it on the internet. With that being said, why don't we actually move on to another bird that I can tell you some interesting facts about. Now, am I going to pass up on the opportunity to totally make <laughs> a segment disrespecting the Beast Machines? There's a lot about that show and toy line that were terrible. Except for like the Vehicons, like the Megabolt Megatron, like that's actually kind of an interesting figure and it's actually one of my favorites along with like Mirage. But we're not talking about those guys. We're talking about like this dude, Air Raptor. And the funny thing about it is it does not say Beast Machines on the front or the back. The only thing that even slightly alludes to it is a vague reference up here and also a vague reference down here of the V-Cons. And it's like, that is the only thing that links this to Beast Machines aside from the style of the packaging. Because if you look at a normal packaging like this one for Thrust, it shares with Air Raptor here. It has the traditional spark background. It has the transformers going down the left side of the packaging. But if you can see here, instead of Cheetor, they've actually replaced it with the Dinobots leader, T-Rex. Our boy T-Rex, we've already looked at him on the main channel. Love that guy. And instead of Beast Machines, they actually have the Deluxe, with, uh, which is not part of the subline's name. It's just on there, ironically. I don't know whether that was a mistake or whatever, but it has the Dinobots one there replacing the Beast Machines logo. But I kind of wonder if they were wanting to kind of separate this from Beast Machines because when you look at the actual toy sales and everything from the time it was on the shelves, yeah, it pretty much was in the toilet, uh, the sales for Beast Machines. Like, Beast Wars was like taking off like a rocket, and then they switched over to Beast Machines, and the sucker goes straight in the crapper. I'm like, well, 
I kind of get why. Like, as good as the V-Cons were, the Maximal figures, yeah, they kind of sucked. And, but uh, Air Raptor kind of stands out as a unique boy because he's, he's wildly imperfect, but there's some crazy stuff about this boy that he has literally machine guns in his wrists. And whenever those pop out, he drops feather bombs. Well, then in robot mode, you see this tail on that? That serves as a shield, which you can see in his art there. And when you rotate the shield, it actually has a quick draw pistol. And then on top of that, he has a man with no name-esque sort of poncho that's formed out of his wings. And I'm like, you know what? This guy, I, he's not perfect, like I said, but he is really kind of interesting. And he is actually a carryover from the Japanese toy line because he was named Arcadus over there. And one of the things that I like about it is Air Raptor, whenever he got brought over as this figure, he actually got his colors really saturated because Arcadus is really just kind of dim and dingy. And me personally being a graphic designer, I love vibrant, bright colors. And so Air Raptor definitely fits that bill. Even though our boy is the good, he has still managed to find those that are bad and ugly. Well, Mr. Peter Cullen, who happens to be next on our docket, I wonder? Well, let me see. It looks like Cheetor is next on your list. Well, as you all just heard Mr. Cullen state, we are going to be taking a look at the Beast Alliance version of Cheetor. Now, the way that they show in the instructions for Cheetor to be utilized is like this. Basically being held like a gun. But who in their right mind is going to wield a sword like this. That, I'm sorry, that's just super silly. However, because I feel that a sword should be held like this, like people wouldn't, you know, normally wield a sword. However, due to this boy's kind of funky nature and where he plugs in at, you can see that figures like Bat Convo, he's got it plugged into his arm because the Titans figures, some of those boys had that. And then you can see over here, now Cosmos has him strapped to his arm, which Along with the curvature of his arm and the curvature of the blade, I really like how that kind of looks. Even though it's not Cosmos's vibe, granted, but at least he does look pretty sick with them. So, I just like buying these guys in sets of two, because as you just saw with Air Razor, whenever she was wielding both of her blades, she looks pretty sick. So, I am definitely not regretting purchasing these boys, even though I initially passed on them. And speaking of Air Razor's segment, we also saw how she pretty much ended Scorponok in a rather brutal fashion. Now this figure right here, he is great in a lot of ways. However, the thing that didn't click with me was the fact that he's a lower quality figure. And what I mean is, is he's one of the cheaper mainline figs from Rise of the Beast. And I, I should have known because Sandspear, this is like a lot of the other figures that have shown up with a additional animal character that forms another weapon. And I, when I picked him up in the store, I noticed that. And it really kind of bugged me because, I mean, the detail on these guys is not slashing. Although, when you get to robot mode, that's where the illusion kind of falls apart really quickly. So we'll address that here in a minute. However, on his own with a little additional Scorpion backup dude, I like how that looks. However, I also did want to go ahead and show you guys what he looks like whenever you use Sandspear as like a tail extension because I feel that with like this little point on the end, it gives this beast mode a little bit more gravitas and makes it look a little bit scarier with this giant attack pincer on his tail, so or stinger I guess to be more accurate. So this thing kind of gives me vibes of Cyberverse whenever we go to robot mode because it's super easy to transform. And you're seeing here how I'm just kind of getting stuff. 
and we're pretty much 99% of the way, well, not 99, but we're pretty close. And uh, just like that, our boy is transformed into his robot mode. Now, what I do like is how they reutilize the tail as a sword th sort of thing. I'm definitely down with that. And you already saw how Sandspear looks with that. Now, the Cyberverse elements I'm talking about, you probably saw in Beast Mode that the, his forearms and his upper arms, they're just very hollow bits. You notice the back here where this part kind of covers the empty void of sadness on his back. So, I mean, this boy, he, like I said, that's why he's very Cyberverse feeling, but from the front, oh, does this boy not look sick. One thing that surprises me is actually the Predacon symbol on his chest because it's more close to what the one was in the show as opposed to what they started doing with the Kingdom one where it was more skull-like and everything. And I like the traditional Beast Wars logo. So the fact that this harkens more to that and this boy is definitively a Predacon, yes, this is helping me to like this figure a lot more. Now, one thing you will notice in, in his face is that this part is his jaw and you have to look really kind of in there below the dark area and you'll see that this boy has a ton of jagged teeth that would even make a Sharktacon jealous. And that is kind of funny that he's got such a monstrous mouth. Plus, I like how the optic differs on this side with like the battle damage or maybe that's intentional, I don't know. But just the detailing on this boy, like I said, from the front, he's immaculate. Now, they do suggest that you actually have Sandspear being held. I know what I just said with Cheetor. However, you can hold Sandspear normally, but because it's got this giant scorpion bit at the bottom, I don't really like how that looks. So, again, I know what I just said with Cheetor. With that being the case, I do prefer whenever I can attach it to his forearm. And there you go. Now he has a monstrous arm that looks pretty sick. However, he does rock his other sword pretty well. So if we go ahead and attach that, yeah, this boy, you do not want to mess with this version of Scorponok. Again, unless you're apparently Air Razor, and then you can just dispatch him rather easily. However, I did just kind of want to show you guys that there are a lot of redeeming qualities for this cheaper mainline figure. And I know that your miles may vary, and that would be totally understandable if you did not feel the same way. However, we're going to look at the boss of an entirely different Scorponok. Although by the time Megatron was this, Scorponok had been long dead, so, you know, moving on. You may notice, though, that there are some things actually different about this Megatron, and that's because I applied an upgrade kit, which, first and foremost, yes, he does have the Judge wig, which, that's not permanent, you can remove it, but it is rather kind of humorous. And when you do so, you can see that this upgrade kit replaces the more toy accurate homage clear visor with one that's a solid color like in the show. And he does have one of three faces and you can see that beautiful kind of purple eyes in there. Now the funny thing about this is when you disassemble the original Megatron head and you plug this in, the eyes are attached to the very back of the stock head. So this little face comes with hollowed out eyes. And so what you do is when you stick it on there, you line it up and you're actually using the original eyes that came with this figure, just with the more, again, show accurate face. And so I thought that was kind of a cool that you still have the original eyes in there and I'm definitely digging that. Now, as you can see, our boy has been given a movable digit finger to where if you wanted him to have a fist, he can still do that. Or if you want him to be very boss and have him pointing for the Predacons to attack their current target, he can definitely do that. Now, the other thing that I wasn't going to apply, well, we'll get to that. There's actually two other things. So if you can see here on the back of his chest, this is kind of where the stock version of his dragon chest would kind of stick out and it wasn't really flush. Well, basically what we do with the upgrade kit is you transplant the spark bit here to the new piece that actually is segmented and it allows it to fold up against his robot mode body a little bit more flush as opposed to where the other one was just kind of sticking out sort of like that. Now, the tail. Basically what I did was is it gives you these two extensions right here, which you can see it's color matched to the rest of his beast mode tail. And this is pretty much primarily for beast mode because I don't like how far down this hangs almost 
pretty much to his ankles. I did like it when it was a little bit higher up, but the trade-off is, again, in beast mode, that's where this tail really looks killer, especially when you have Megatron's beast mode in a flight position with the tail just kind of really whipping around there. And so basically with all these upgrade kits, it's just further enhancing the figure that is my top favorite from last year. And so with, you know, he even trounces his kingdom version. So I'm excited to kind of see what they do when they decide to tackle his transmetal T-Rex mode. That'll, oh, if this is any indicator, it's gonna be killer. And everyone, here we have gotten to our girls finally. And I have to say that I'm kind of disappointed in the Studio Series 1 and because it just feels like a very, I don't know, simple and washed out version, which to be fair, she was a light pink and yes, it is more screen accurate, but I like the details being picked out. And so I was really kind of intrigued to see what the Studio Series had to offer and you can definitely see that you know, the headlights and the grill and how the Autobot emblem, they just don't stand out as much as the other RC. Now, again, that's not accurate to have all this black because, you know, that's not her thing. So, definitely vehicle mode, I'm not too impressed with. However, that's just one of the things that she is. So, let's see how she actually fares versus her robot mode. Now I could go into the whole spiel about how things are different, but when I really start to look at this, it's because I'm noticing a lot more has changed on this girl than I initially thought because from where her belly button would be down, everything on her from there down is drastically different even though this is supposed to be the same character. And you can see that the feet and the sculpting of the legs and especially the thighs because this girl right here has wider thighs and a different crotch area. And you can see that this one, the thighs are a little bit closer together and it's a little bit tighter around her, her crotch area too. But basically whenever you get up to the chest because they both utilize that same part, it's identical. The arms are somewhat the same. There's actually been a little bit of remolding in the forearm because whereas these sockets where you can see they've gone and filled it in. Now you can also see that the guns are basically the same that she had from the original version over there. Now we have to get to the backpack because that's where things really start to get different. And you can see that it's more of a squared off shape because they incorporated probably some of the better elements of the Earthrise RC and there wasn't many. And you can see that over here, it does have more of a slimmed down look than the kind of just collapsed up bits of her car mode. So there's a lot of improvements on this girl in her robot mode that kind of blow me away. So if you guys have seen on this channel before, we actually took kind of a quick look at Crash Bar because he's actually a pretty good figure. Now, the one thing that I have never really messed with him is the weaponizer feature. And you can see that now that he's actually kind of hooked up to smokescreen, I like the way that it changes the way his legs look because this doesn't feel like so much a foot anymore as it feels just part of this massive leg. And I like the wheels on his legs because it gives me sort of that Rise of the Beast RC vibe where she's kind of rolling around on her wheels or maybe like a Beast Machines thrust vibe. The other thing is how tightly those blasts, those big saddlebag blasters tie into the front of Smokescreen's arms. That's awesome. The other thing is, is I do like the shoulder mounted blasters that kind of form there. And the other thing is that his actual body, you can see that I had to use Smokescreen's gun to attach it, but this kind of feels like maybe battery backpack that powers the forearm blasters and, and the shoulder blasters and, and even the shoulder blasters. So this powered up Smokescreen looks really cool to me personally. All right, so we have hit the last segment in this video. You obviously can tell on this boy right here that we have none other than the Transmetal Rhinox times three. Yet, when looking at these Rhinoxes, one of these is not like the others, and I don't mean just in the colors. Well, obviously, as you can tell, these guys over here are wielding their traditional blaster horn blade thingies, you know, whatever, because in the comics, this essentially became a gun, and they treated the horn like it was a clip that could be interchangeable, which, love that. But, this guy over here is actually rocking an official blaster. 
Now, this is actually taken from the movie Accurate Deco Hot Rod, and it's about the only gun that could fit in this guy's hand, ironically enough, because it's not a five millimeter hole. And that was, again, to accommodate this thing that it originally came with. So with the horn kind of being a missing element, we had to kind of fill in the blanks. And if I need to put him in beast mode, I can probably keep one of these other guys in robot mode, give them the blaster, and then just use one of their horns. I mean, because it's the same mold, it shouldn't matter, right? Now, this version of Rhinox over here, he actually is one of those funky ones because they took about five of the transmetal molds and what they did was is they gave them these minicon peg ports which you can see that whenever he wants to do the armada fun he can take any of these minicons and they'll attach and it, you know it looks funky but he can do that but the interesting thing about this rhinox is that when you open it up where his spark is you can see that they actually went in and molded an autobot symbol which is strange because whenever these guys originally came out, you can see there the, the, where that symbol was. You, it's the black sort of mood ring thing where you rub it and then it reveals his maximal allegiance. And this guy is the same way too. You can see there's the maximal emblem there. So it's just small aesthetic details that they changed on Rhinox that I really kind of find sort of interesting. Now what kicked off this whole Rhinox thing was not only just the rise of the Beast Voyager figure coming out, but I really began to think about this Rhinox in particular because I remember seeing this guy in package in the store. My dad literally picked it up out of a giant bin they had at Walmart that were literally just Beast Wars figures. And he said, hey, you could get this one. And it was this blue Rhinox. And I really kind of regretted the fact that the me from the early 2000s was like, nah, I'm good. I don't want that garishly colored Rhinox. And yet here I am, a man in my 30s, and I'm like, I want that garishly colored Rhinox. <laughs> so yeah, I, I definitely like this figure. And this guy ties back into the Air Raptor part of this video because if you saw in the diagram that I uploaded, it showed Beast Wars and Beast Machines having a crossover period. And they actually did because for the majority of Beast Machines run, they actually re they actually banged out a bunch of Transmetal recolors. And th because this guy over here, he's the original Transmetal version that came out. However, as you saw in the packaging for this guy, it actually has that deal that says new deluxe transformers. And so that new little tagline there actually signified the ones that were still selling at the time the Beast Machines was making its initial toy run. Well, Mr. Cullen, does that wrap up our roundup for today? I believe so. You covered quite a bit of ground today. This will probably be a little bit longer of a video than usual. I believe you are correct, sir. So let's go ahead and put a bow on this, why don't we? I believe your audience will be okay with that choice. But, I guys, I, <laughs> I've pretty much run out of gas here. So, I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the stuff that, again, just popped up on, with my head. I really want to do a Tripredicus review on the main channel because I just got one in today. However, he's missing a ton of parts, um, so he's going to be potentially farther down the line if I decide to do him. I also want to do a Polar Claw review. However, the only thing that's kind of holding me back right now is the fact that on the main channel, we're going to have a summer special video. And I'm not, I'm not going to reveal what it is right here now, but if you guys pay attention to both channels, be on the lookout for that. This video has taken a lot out of me, so I've got to regroup and then shoot that video. Um, however, it's something that we would normally see kind of at the end of the year, uh, just to a lesser degree, because we're only halfway through this one. So, maybe I gave too much away there. If I did, I really don't care. You guys are smart. I trust you to figure it out. So, with that being said, guys, we'll see you in another video.